So I have been a property manager, like I said, since uh, 2009, so almost 10 years now. And if I'm being honest, there are times when I really feel like, how have I been a property manager for 10 years? Like I've had the same title for 10 years, and that's a really long time. I could be a fourth grader by now. Um, and I think when you, for me at least, when I start feeling like I'm not moving forward, I start wondering what my future looks like in this industry. If I'm not moving forward, where am I going? And so over the last couple of years, what I have come to realize is that as a property manager, it, it's more important that we are focusing on and I am focusing on my legacy and what am I doing regarding this industry and to shape the industry than it is to be focused on what does my next promotion or career path or step look like. Uh, so I'm so excited to talk to this group um, because anybody who knows me and South Park um, and our business ventures that extend from that knows that we are management driven. Um, we are passionate about management and how we can help leasing. And I think that has made a niche for us in the business that has kept us strong for 15 years. I've worked with almost every company in this room. Um, we've delivered over 100 properties around the country, renovations, new builds, um, and we are one of those people always thinking, what can we do for them? What else can we do for them? Um, design is wonderful. My partner and I are here tonight, Martha Tomley, um, and we love design, but we actually love what you guys do even more, and that's why we're still in it and why we take the beatings that we do every year and keep going back for more as far as student housing because um, we just want to make your job easier. Um, and like I said, we are working with all of the companies around the country. And because of that, um, you know, I hope that I can get to know each of you. He's only giving me five minutes to talk today. And I could talk about what you're doing and how we can help all day long. So I'd love for each of you to stop by and say hello to Martha and I. Um, like I said, we are already working with your companies probably somewhere. And I'd love to see how we can help you with refresh models. Um, and this is the most exciting news I have tonight, which is for 10 years a dream, um, we've been asked everywhere we go, can I buy that pillow? Can you do my model? Can you do my apartment? Um, managers, parents, where can I buy that coffee table? So um, in thinking about things, there's Target and there's you know Dormify and there's all these things, but we wanted to offer a service that you guys could be really excited about. And so we're introducing um, wearestellardesigns.com which is all of our awesome vendors. Um, but the unique thing about us online that you can purchase, so you can refresh your model, you can, you know, if you only have money for one bedroom, because people will call me and say, what can I get for $5,000? And I'm like, I mean, nothing, you're in Arizona and I'm here. And so basically, we finally have it up and running. I'm so excited we launched it yesterday. And like I said, um, we really did want to do it for us, obviously, but we really, wanted to do it for your teams um, and something for them to talk about and for a way for you to refresh your own properties. Um, so I challenge you to check it out. The difference between us is that it's all curated for you, designs, collections, so you don't have to think and you don't have to run to Target. Um, you can just hit a bedroom and have the whole thing come to your property and, and know that the art, everything is awesome. So I'm really excited about that, and I'm really excited to get to know you guys, and I hope you'll come and meet both Martha and I later today. Um, I want to introduce Jackie, who um, I love her message, and we do work with Peak. She's a senior property manager there, and as you know, Peak is in the top five of management companies in the country. Um, she's out of Chicago, and I love her message about legacy versus promotion, and I think it's an important one and a unique one, and um, having gone to conferences everywhere, I'm just so glad that she is going to be speaking to a topic that I don't think any of us have ever really sat through <laughs> and heard and really can learn from, and I'm, I'm really excited about her point of view, Jackie. 
Okay, hi everybody, I'm Jackie. I am a property manager and I have been for a really long time. And that is how I came to Wes and to this conference to talk about uh, what I think it means to focus on our legacy as property managers or team builders more than being focused on our next promotion or our next title. So I wanted to start with a little bit about myself I came to the student housing industry in 2007. Was anybody in student housing in 2007? Okay, so if you remember way back then, um, I think one of the defining things about property management teams in those days was how young we were and how quickly we were getting promoted. Um, Anybody else? Yeah, so I had never been in property management. I was hired basically what we would call today uh, an assistant manager. And I moved from Michigan to Wisconsin to join this property management team. And when I got there, my property manager was two years younger than me and I was in my mid twenties. And um, he had been a leasing consultant for eight months before he was made a property manager. Yeah, like that doesn't happen today, but right. But back then, for obvious reasons, but back then, um, I don't think this was that uncommon because I think in those days, the industry was really focused on this entrepreneurial spirit and things were moving quickly and people were being rewarded for hanging in there and helping to develop the policies that have shaped the industry we're all working in today. Um, the downside or the, the, the flip side, it's not really a downside, is that Today we are a more institutionalized industry. And so uh, in addition to having more institutionalized reporting and operating policies and procedures, we also have more institutionalized human resources standards, um, promotion standards, and we've seen the rapid growth or promotion slow down. And so I have been a property manager, like I said, since uh, 2009, so almost 10 years now. And if I'm being honest, there are times when I really feel like, how have I been a property manager for 10 years? Like I've had the same title for 10 years and that's a really long time. I could be a fourth grader by now. Um, and I think when you, for me at least, when I start feeling like I'm not moving forward, I start wondering what my future looks like in this industry. If I'm not moving forward, where am I going? And so over the last couple of years, what I have come to realize is that as a property manager, it, it's more important that we are focusing on and I am focusing on my legacy and what am I doing regarding this industry and to shape the industry than it is to be focused on what does my next promotion or career path or step look like. And so I, I look at my legacy really by asking myself two questions. And these are questions that I ask myself all the time and I hope that you will ask yourself as well. Number one, am I changing this industry for the better? And number two, are my employees or my former employees successful? And so in, in kind of walking through this with Wes and, and talking about it, here I think is the two key components to creating a legacy that you can be proud of whatever your title is or wherever you end up. So number one, constantly remembering that we on site, and I think there's some regionals in the room, so y'all too, we really have the power to shape the industry. So. Anyone that's been here or has been with any of the major companies, you've heard the stories of the CEOs, the COOs, the presidents, they started as leasing consultants, they were an RA, and they really grew up in this industry through the ranks from, I don't wanna say the bottom, but from you know really the entry level positions and now they're the, the RMs, the VPs, the COOs. And I think that if, if you and I do our job right, we can, um, we can continue that, right? Like we can continue to raise up the next generation of C-suite holders. And I would like for us to focus really intentionally on what that means. So all of us are operating in uh, areas that have academic institutions. All of our academic institutions have diversity statements or inclusionary statements of some kind. And one thing that I focus on is making sure that where I'm operating in my market, 
I am using that statement to guide my practices as well because I think that the best, strongest, most productive and cohesive teams are going to be ones that are representative of the students that we serve. And so as a property manager, we have the ability to recruit and retain and promote strong and diverse talent and really over the years create much more diversity of experience and thought than I think uh, is prevalent in um, our C-suite spaces today. So that's number one. We can, I can shape the industry. I might be a property manager, but I'm still pro producting, productive. I'm still productive in shaping the industry. And number two is remembering all of the time that our employees are always a reflection on us. So last month, um, I wrote this when I, we were going to be meeting in September, so two months ago now. Um, two months ago, I had the coolest thing happen, and this was a new experience for me in 10 years, so they do come up. Um, I had a leasing consultant that I hired in 2012. He was a junior at one of the schools in our community. And he had no leasing experience, but he had this just really incredible personality. He's one of those people you just want to be around. And we hired him on the spot. And uh, he stayed with us. I actually left the property before he did, but he has stayed in the industry. And two months ago, he was hired by Peak Campus to be a property manager on our new development team. So he's currently doing a new development uh, in Illinois, not that far from me. And it was the coolest experience because um, he, like many of us, didn't ever intend to be a student housing property manager. I think a lot of us can probably say that. Uh, but he got hired when he was 20 years old and he just grew in this industry and in all of these different um, positions that he had had and now he's a property manager and it was really exciting to reconnect with him um, as he came to peak as a property manager and for me it was just one more reminder that our employees, no matter if they work with us today or they worked with us five years ago or eight years ago, they constantly are a reflection on us and on our leadership style and on how we are shaping the industry. And I believe that Peak Campus and student housing at large are a better industry because he is still in it. Um, and as managers, we, we can do that every day. We can do that. We can keep the best, strongest, most diverse talent pool in our industry if we keep doing our job well. So I want to say first of all that five years ago if somebody had come to me and said okay you're not going to get a promotion today but listen focus on your legacy. It'll be great. Um, I would have been really annoyed by that right because I would be like no just give me a promotion. Um, I'm sure I'm not alone in that. And I, and I think it is a shift. It's a, it's a shift in our mentality every day to say I'm here um, and I have aspirations to be somewhere else, but while I'm here, I'm still making a difference every day. I don't have to be anywhere else to be shaping our industry. And so, so I think the question then becomes like, what does that look like? If you're just starting out, if you're just thinking, this is where I'm going to be for a while, how can I make a difference? And I think there are three, um, key things that help me on this path every day because it does get frustrating, right? Like it, it does get monotonous. You do think, do I want to keep being a property manager? Am I still passionate about this? And so I look at three things and these are the things I do to keep my job exciting and challenging and to keep my team moving forward. So number one, I think we have to make it a part of our, our plan to mentor our staff. It can't just be something that we do. We can't just stumble into mentoring our staff. That has to be intentional and scheduled and that we know exactly what they're looking to do. So if you aren't doing this right now, I would encourage you to start, even if it's just one-on-one -on -one meetings once a month with your team and make sure they know that you are focused on them. You wanna help them grow. Number two, read, 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 read. Read everything you can about every aspect of the industry. Um, I have read some of the most boring books on commercial real estate investing. Um, I've read a lot of books on all different aspects of the student housing industry and of real estate at large. Some of it's entertaining, some of it's not, but all of it helps me understand some aspect of my job, whether it's understanding what 
my owners are looking for in a retail lease contract or understanding what's really going on during the sales process, which is completely overwhelming the first time you do it. Um, so the more you read, the more you know, and um, the more well-rounded you are, the more you can accomplish in your position. And number three, I think this is probably goes without saying, um, and yet some sometimes we just don't do it, is to stay in touch, to stay in touch with everybody that you know, everybody that you work with. Um, your leasing consultants that graduate and go to work in other industries are someday gonna be working for one of the vendors you wanna work with. Your AM that leaves and goes to another competitor or goes to another company, they are someday gonna be working for the company you wanna interview with. Like this is a small, small industry. And the broader your network, the more potential you have and the more opportunities you're gonna have, not just for promotion, but for things like meeting Wes and attending this conference or um, you know, doing due diligence on another site within your portfolio, et cetera. So I think I can't stress enough how important it is to stay in touch with your network and always be networking with the people that you know in this industry. And that's all I have. Thank you.